In the area of clean energy, we've been gaining national and global attention for the direction of our state. And the Assistant Secretary of Energy, Kathy Zoy, calls us a model for the country. It wasn't easy. It's not going to be easy going forward. And there are going to be times where this conversion is going to be more expensive for the individual consumer. But for the economy overall, it's going to be a plus. Because what we do every year, think about this. We take five to seven billion dollars out of our economy every single year. And we just send it away from Hawaii to buy oil. And we buy the majority of our oil from foreign countries and companies. The large majority, 90% of our oil comes from foreign countries and foreign companies. And we just give them here every year, take this five to seven billion dollars. Just take it out of Hawaii. We only have a 60 billion dollar state gross product. But five to seven billion is leaving every single year. So while our bill in the short term may go up slightly as a consumer of renewables and through our efficiency efforts and conservation, the fact is over the long term we will be more secure and our economy will be stronger because that money will be kept here, generating jobs here, and we won't be so dependent on people who have no reason to care about us one way or the other. And that's the foreign oil companies the, and the foreign countries where we're currently purchasing our oil. So for me, this energy issue was not an environmental issue, although there are going to be positive environmental impacts as we make this conversion. This was a security issue and an economic strength issue for the people of Hawaii. We're 2,300 miles from anywhere in order to turn on our lights every day, we have to bring oil across at least 2,300 miles of open ocean, assuming we can even get it, assuming we can afford it, assuming people are willing to continue to sell it to us. And here we sit, dependent on that product reaching us. All of us should be committed to energy security, and that means making this conversion. We also had a great year when we secured the $1 billion telescope uh, over on the Big Island known as the 30 meter telescope. And it's going to create not only jobs, but educational opportunities for the young people of Hawaii. It has a very robust public benefits package, almost all of it focused on education. And that brings me to that very important subject and another one that has a huge impact on the economy and that's the education of the children of Hawaii. For your business to succeed, you know better than I do, you need qualified employees of all kinds. Those people who have the tools for the future. And as, as you know, Hawaii was granted recently the race to the top, $75 million. And that money cannot be just put into the general fund of the Department of Education. It has to be spent in very specific ways. And I want to give a lot of credit to my senior policy advisor, Linda Smith, for the coordinating role that she played in the Race to the Top application. This was an application that was required for the governor to sign off on to the Department of Education, the Board of Education. And Linda played a, a critical coordinating role to make certain that we, if they were going to spend this money, we were going to get it, not just to get money, but to actually begin the transformation we think needed to take place. And that meant all students being career or college ready when they graduate from high school. And that is our goal, that 100% of these students, there's no reason we can't meet that goal, 100% be career or college ready. It really was a, a collaborative effort, and I appreciate uh, all of Linda's help. Well, I'm going to jump ahead, because I want to get to the question part. But I want to remind you at this point in my remarks that there is going to be a critically important constitutional amendment question on the ballot when you vote. On November the 2nd, or if you vote early, or if you vote by mail, and for me, the governor's race obviously is very important, and it's not a secret who I support. <laughs> uh, the congressional race is critically important here in our first district. Both important, but I'm focused here uh, where Charles DeJou is running. No secret who I'm supporting there. But once you get beyond those two races, I think the most important issue on the ballot is this constitutional amendment question. And you will be asked this question. 
should the governor of Hawaii be able to appoint the members of the Board of Education as prescribed by law? This means the next governor will have the opportunity to pick people to be on the Board of Education. Right now they're elected, but as you saw, I, I caught a glimpse in this morning's paper, something like 45% of the people who voted in the primary left the Board of Education election blank, 45%. So nearly half people don't even vote in Board of Education, and it's understandable because they don't even know who the people are. And so what ends up happening is that the labor unions control who gets onto the Board of Education to a very large degree. Between HGEA, HSTA, and UPW, they have a vested interest in who's on that board because the board makes decisions that impact their employees, their, their union members, and that's their, certainly their right to do that. But no one is really representing the children in that equation. And so the constitutional amendment will say to us as citizens of Hawaii, do you want the next governor who's directly accountable to you, do you want them to appoint the members of the Board of Education? And I'm happy to be able to tell you that not only do I support you voting yes, so when you see that amendment about Board of Education, vote yes, don't leave it blank, because that's like voting no. Vote yes, but my predecessor, Governor Cayetano, supports it. His predecessor, Governor Waihei, supports it. His predecessor, Governor Ariyoshi, supports it. Every living governor supports this amendment. It's not because I'll get to choose because I won't be here to make the choice. Whoever the next governor is, they need to have this authority. And I'm asking you to vote yes. Why is it so important? Because then you have someone to hold accountable. Right now, you can't even name three members on the Board of Education. If I went around this room, you'd be hard pressed and I wouldn't want to do it <laughs> because I know it's true. I, I know it's, people are now thinking, I don't even know two, I'm not sure. Well, that's not a good situation because remember, this is the organization, this Board of Education. Think about in these terms, as a business person, this is a group of people that every year we take about $2 billion and we hand it off to them before anything else is done. Think about it. Two billion dollars out of a five billion dollar general fund, approximately, and we just hand it to these people who we don't know to spend as they will. So this amendment gives us the opportunity to get some accountability for all of that spending. And I'm excited about the possibility. And frankly, while the school furlough uh, issue got a lot of attention, if not for that, this issue would never be on the ballot. We would never have this opportunity, and this change would not have come about. And everyone involved knows that that's true. So sometimes good things come out of difficult situations. Going forward, I think it's clear that we need leaders who support and understand businesses. We need leaders who will not raise taxes. And I heard Ron Heller say they're teeing up, and I heard Rep Ward say they're teeing up a tax increase. And it's not surprising that that's occurring. And that's why your vote for governor, lieutenant governor is so important. Because the check and balance that's needed in government is critical when you have the kind of imbalance that exists in our state legislature. By sheer numbers, the Democrats control the legislative process and while, while we are committed to making inroads to bring about that balance, for the past eight years, the only balance has been because you had a Republican governor, lieutenant governor, who could serve as a check on the legislature. They couldn't even propose things as outrageously as they would previously, although they sometimes did, and you might have seen this recently. They passed a couple of bills, one that said you had to hire 80% local people on construction jobs and so on. Federal government has just ruled that uh, against the law. So I had vetoed it and they had overridden it, but you'll get less of that if you have the balance because they know that it will be vetoed. And we also need a legislature that is aware of the issues that you face, of the challenges that are out there for small businesses. So this election is an important one and we can all play our key role in making certain that Hawaii stays on track, that we continue now in the right direction that we're on, 
that we don't slip back into the way things were where business was seen as, as the enemy and something to control as opposed to our philosophy, which is to see you as something critically important to the well-being of all the people in the state and organizations that we want to nurture and to see grow. My administration is going to work hard until the last day, so please continue to let us know where you think we're doing well or where we're going off track. And I just want to thank you one more time for all the help you've given me through all these years. It's been the greatest privilege of my life to be the governor for the people of the state of Hawaii and made me the envy of all the governors in America. So thank you very much. I don't know if there are any questions. Do I take questions? Yep. How much happy. time do you have? As much as I Hold. need. Perfect. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Governor.